And CBC's Robert Frank joins us now, along with Aston's executive chairman, Lawrence Stroll, in a Closing Bell exclusive interview. Robert, over to you. Will, thanks. And Lawrence, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. So you have put a billion dollars into this company over the past year and a half. You just said in the press conference you're very proud. And yet, if you look at the share price, it is down almost 90 percent from its IPO price. What are investors missing? What do you want to tell those investors right now who are disappointed, frankly, in where these shares have done? Well, um, and, and that does require an explanation. Um, firstly, the billion dollars includes the Formula One team, which was started three years ago. So it's a, it's a, it's a little while further back. But as far as direct to your question about share price, um, there is a slight confusion. The company did an IPO at a share price of 19 pounds, I believe. Don't quote me, but approximately that. Um, there, was, there was a couple of rights issues post that IPO that happened uh, last year, um, which brought the new share price to approximately 10 pounds, uh, 10 or 11. So the actual share price today, which I don't check every day, I think is about 20. So since I took over as executive chairman, uh, from a $10 share price, we're currently at 20. So it's doubled since I've taken over. And if you look at the quarter that you just reported, I mean, it was a great quarter. Revenues more than tripled. You had, uh, you're still losing money, but less of a loss than a year ago. The DBX is clearly the driver here. Where do you see production for this year? What's your target? What's your target in the next two to three years? And what about eventual profitability? Um, as we've said, this year we're on track to hit our numbers. We just mentioned that last week, which is over 6,000 units. Um, we've also mentioned that we have a roadmap of how to get to 10,000 units within the next three and a half to four years by 2025. We are on track to hit that plan. You touched it. Our, our, our sports cars, our order intake for 21 exceeds our expectations. Um, DBX has been phenomenal. It's been a transformative game changer for the company. It basically doubled the volume of the company previously had because of... say the DBX is the SUV. The S the sorry, the, 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 the DBX, which is our SUV. Um, so, we, you know, where we were only selling sports cars, we're now selling equivalent amount of sports cars and our DBX, which, which is an SUV. Um, and that's to be followed up with a very exciting mid-engine program, one of which you're, you're, two of which you're seeing here today. And then we have um, an opening price point mid-engine coming in 24. We have a plan to be cash flow positive within the next 18 months that we've already mentioned. Um, everything's on plan to do that. I think the most important thing is the business is now completely de-risked. There was five milestones that I had to accomplish in one year in order to achieve that. And thank God, very proud of myself, I've been able to do so. One was to get the company on strong financial footing. Now the company has enough from all the money we've raised over the past 18 months to see our business plan through comfortably of getting to 10,000 cars, 2 billion of volume pounds, and over 500 million of EBITDA by 2425. The company's fully funded to do that. Um, most important, as you brought up, the SUV, we can now check the box. The confirmation is the orders are there, the customers love it. It is, I think, the best looking SUV. It's an SUV that drives like a sports car. So no risk of the SUV not selling, which two years ago, prior to delivery, of course, we didn't know. Third, I brought in the best management team, best CEO with Tobias, 26 years at AMG, understands this business inside and out. The only CEO who also is a CTO, a chief technical officer, which is rare in the business. Um, Fourth was to get Mercedes to be a very large, the, the, the largest minority shareholder uh, in the business, the second largest shareholder after myself. And a company of this size needs a big brother like that. Um, but the relationship is different. We get bespoke power units and it's different than the historical relationship was with Mercedes. It's just stronger, better and took it to a new level. Uh, the, the, the last was coming out with product range that takes us up until 2025, including going directly into uh, our own electric vehicle. Today, we're launching our hybrid for the first time, uh, combustion with a hybrid engine. We have a full EV plan for 25. And the last was to launch, as we're sitting here, our Formula One car, 
So to bring Aston Martin, works, a works team, back to Formula One in British Racing Green, to market all those initiatives, all that product, to take the technology out of Formula One, to put it into our mid-engine cars, to meet our customers at 23 Grand Prix around the world. You know better than anybody. Every time a Formula One comes to town, it's like a Super Bowl in that country. Right. And we get to meet, we have, in those 23 countries, we have 21 dealers. So we get to meet about 500 customers every race, 20 odd times a year. So I don't know another business you could do that and touch your customers. So, so for us, all the risk is behind us. I've delivered on every single thing I have said to the public since the day I became executive chairman and far surpassed what I've already promised. So I'm very pleased to say I've been able to deliver on everything we've done. The risk is behind us. We have tremendous growth in front of us and a Formula One team to market it. So it uh, couldn't be much better than right now.